Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new affordable mini PC from B-Link known as the EQ12 N305. Now, one of the big reasons I wanted to get my hands on this was the new CPU we have here known as the i3 N305. This definitely looks pretty cool on paper. It's a low wattage, eight core CPU, and it's one that we haven't taken a look at on the channel yet. And I'm hoping it offers some decent performance. B-Link has changed up their design a little bit with their mini PCs, their new EQ line at least, and they're offering four different color variants, but uh, we've got the blue here. And inside of the box, we get a couple HDMI cables, a six foot and a one foot. We also get a vase mount, some screws for mounting that in place. And we've got a 12 volt power supply here. It's actually a 35 watt, 12 volt PSU. Taking a look at the I.O. up front here, we've got two full-size USB 3.2 ports and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Not much happening around the sides, but we do have some ventilation going on. And finally, moving around back here, we've got a single USB 2.0 port, USB Type-C, which is USB 3.2, it will support video out, dual 2.5 gigabit ethernet, and dual full-size HDMI ports. In total, we can do three displays out, both of the HDMI and that USB-C back here. So I did want to give you a quick look at the internals, and B-Link has been doing something pretty cool with their mini PCs. As you can see, just pulling the bottom off, we've got an extra fan in here, and this is actually here to help cool off that NVMe SSD and the RAM. Plus, we can add a 2.5 inch drive in the bottom, just need to slot it right in. This does come out so we can access the NVMe SSD and the RAM. And one thing to note about their new EQ series is this does support DDR5, but unfortunately with the new Intel N-series chips, they only support single channel RAM. So we've got one stick in here. This one just happened to come with 16 gigabytes. Taking a look at the specs here, like I mentioned, we've got that Intel Core i3 N305, and I kind of wish they didn't call this an i3. It's more of the Celeron style, but we've got eight cores, eight threads, a base clock of 1.8 gigahertz in this unit, and a turbo up to 3.8, 16 gigabytes of DDR5 in single channel at 4,800 megahertz, a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD, and this is PCIe 3.0. Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and this is running Windows 11 right out of the box. Okay, so yeah, this is definitely a chip I've been wanting to check out since Intel announced it. And we've still got that i3 moniker, but with this, we've got eight cores and eight threads. It's the N305, and really, I think they should have called this the Celeron i3 N305 because it's more along lines of those lower end chips. The 12th gen i3s are going to be more powerful than this, but this is a cheaper setup, and we're going to see a lot of lower cost mini PCs come to the market with this. It does support DDR5 RAM, but unfortunately the new N line of Intel chips only use single channel RAM, so we've only got one DIMM here running at 4800MHz, 16 gigs, and of course we've got the built-in UHD graphics. This is a lower wattage chip, and we can do a maximum of 25 watts with the way B-Link has it set up out of the box. But so far, it's been a pretty quick little system for everyday normal tasks. Web browsing, email checking, document editing. You want to do some light photo editing on this chip? You definitely could. I am connected over Ethernet right now, but remember, we do have Wi-Fi 6 built in. Just check out the N100 here on B-Link's website. Everything loads up really quickly here. And uh, of course, we have to check out some 4K video playback. So let me bring something up here. And for this, we'll go with an oldie but a goodie. Haven't tested this out in a while, so uh, we'll make sure we're at 4K. Stats for nerds on. And we'll see what happens. So yeah, in the past, testing this out on lower end ARM chips, it definitely gave a lot of them a run for its money. We do have stats for nerds running up in the top left hand corner. Got a couple drop frames on the initial load in, but this is kind of normal, so we'll let it play out just a little more. I didn't want it to kind of get hung up here and just start dropping a ton of frames. We'll also do a skip ahead just to see how quick it kind of buffers that out. And yeah, actually I was expecting it to drop a few more than that. Not bad. And I've always had really good luck with these uh, Intel chips and 4K video playback. Usually the Celeron, even with just the four cores and four threads, does a pretty decent job as long as the wattage is set up correctly. And like I mentioned, this will run it up to 25 watts. So we should be good to go with 4K video playback. Obviously running from YouTube, really good there, 4K 60 if you wanted to run from an external drive or internal. It'll also be able to handle it quite well. Now the next thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks that I ran on this chip. 
And the first one we have here is Geekbench 6, single core, 1269, multi, 4860. Definitely coming in a lot higher than the other N-series chips that they offer. But, you know, I was kind of expecting a little more out of that single core, given we have that 3.8 boost. Next up, we've got some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark, Wildlife, a Vulcan benchmark, 4,700. And the final one I ran here was 3D Mark Night Raid. And with this, we got a score of 7,623. I was definitely expecting these lower scores because after all, we've got built-in UHD graphics. These go up to 1.25 gigahertz and we've only got 32 execution units. Nothing close to the Iris XE with 80 or 96 execution units, but I still think we can get some gaming and emulation out of the way on this. So uh, moving over to some PC gaming now. And first up, we definitely had to test out OG Skyrim, 1080p, low settings, 60fps, got a couple dips every once in a while, down to around 58, but not bad. If I didn't have that frame counter on, I wouldn't even notice it. And uh, if you take a look at Afterburner, you can see that, yeah, this does go up to 25 watts like they stayed over on their website. Actually, we just hit 26, so a little bit of a boost there. We've got those clocks sitting at 3.8, and not all 8 cores will go up to 3.8. We've got one core that'll go up to 3.8, one core that goes up to 3.6, and I believe the rest go to 3.4. Next up, CSGO 1080p low settings. I actually got an average of 79 FPS out of this, but you will see it kind of stutter every once in a while. Not sure if it's due to the dual channel RAM or not. Taking it down to 900p would probably be the way to go to run this game, but it's still pretty impressive to see these low-end chips play these games at full speed. And finally, for the PC games, we've got Street Fighter V, low settings, 900p. Was really hoping I could stretch this out at 1080 low settings, but I did have those dips. Right there at 900p, we've got a steady 60. This fighting game works great on the N305. Not bad. I mean, we're working with low-end UHD graphics. Definitely a lot less powerful than uh, Radeon RDNA 2 or RDNA 3, but these are coming in a lot cheaper. We also had to test out some emulation, and I had a good feeling that this little chip was going to do a pretty decent job. Here's GameCube using the Dolphin emulator. We've got Automotalista, 1080p using the Vulcan back end. This is one of those games that does struggle on lower end chips, but it's pushing right through, giving us a constant 60. Even around these corners up here, this is where it usually lags out on low end systems. PlayStation 2 is another one I wanted to test. We've got PCSX2, 720p, DirectX 11 back end. I tried Vulcan, but with some of the games, it still gives us some issues because we are on the experimental version of this emulator. But with DirectX 11, even the harder to emulate games can run at 720p. Something like Gran Turismo 4 will run at 1080, but when you move over to Ratchet and Clank or God of War 2, you will have to take it down to 720p. And finally, we've got some PlayStation 3 emulation. I thought this was pretty impressive, but keep in mind it's not going to run every PlayStation 3 game at full speed. As we know, there are some out there that are just really hard to emulate. But seeing the uh, N305 running this Tekken game at full speed using RPCS3, 720p Vulcan is pretty promising. I actually thought we'd have a lot of trouble with PlayStation 3 emulation on this chip. Another thing I always like to take a look at with these mini PCs is total system power consumption. And remember, this isn't just from the CPU. This is everything combined. I have this plugged into a kilowatt meter while I'm doing my testing. And in idle, it only pulls 8 watts. Average gaming does jump up to 27. And the maximum that I could get this to hit while maxing out all 8 cores and the built-in iGPU was 33 watts. And remember, with that 33 watts, that's kind of an extreme use case scenario. Uh, while you're doing your normal everyday things, like uh, even emulation or gaming, it's never going to hit that kind of wattage. So far, I think the N305 is actually a really great performing budget chip. Uh, we can get a little more out of this by upping the wattage. Remember, we're only at 25 for everything we tested. I have done a little bit of testing from the BIOS and I was able to take it all the way up to 35, which will allow us to get those higher clocks on all the cores and the GPU. So if you're interested in seeing a video like that, let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you've got any questions or you want to see anything else running on this new chip, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.